first of all recognize our distinguished guests, resource persons, our uh, favorite secretary, the Department of Labor and Employment Secretary, Secretary uh, Silvestre Bello III. Oh, I know. Of course, uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, Yusek Ernesto Abella, Yusek uh, Jing Paras, our former colleague from Dole, Secretary Abdullah Mao, Presidential Advisor on OFW and Muslim Concerns. Sir, welcome back. DFWD Undersecretary May Feancheta Templa. Hi, ma'am. Representative from uh, Black Outlet Training Institute, Mr. Jerome Alcantara. National President, Ako OFW Incorporated, Ms. Marcia Gonzalez Sadikon. Ma'am. <coughs> POA Governing Board representing the private sector, Ms. Uh, Estrelita Hizon. Oh, Ma'am Lita, good to see you. Chairwoman of the Philippine Association of Agencies for Kuwait, Ms. Telma Wanang. Wanang. Ma'am, good morning. From the Commission of Filipino Overseas, Under Secretary Astravel Pimentel Naik. From Ola, our uh, good friend and uh, also a Celtic fanatic, Attorney Hans Leo Kakdak. My favorite, uh, the Deputy Director General, Rosana Ordaneta, ma'am. Chairwoman of the Philippine Association of Service Exporters Incorporated, Ms. Edwina Beach, ma'am. From POTA, uh, Attorney uh, Bernard Olavia, our Administrator, sir. President of uh, PASE, Ms. Uh, Elsa Villa. Good morning. Good morning po sa inyong lahat at uh, maraming salamat for attending. Isang malaking uh, karangalan po na makasama kayo ngayong uh, umaga pong ito. This hearing, again, as I mentioned earlier, is a continuation of uh, our deliberations on six proposed Senate resolutions submitted by Senator Pacquiao, Senator Nancy Binay, who is... Uh, present here today, she is the uh, most active, and I would say it, most active in my committee. Senator Nancy Bean, I, again, thank you. Senator uh, uh, Wingert Chalian, Senator uh, Grifo, Senator Sani Angara, and this representation. Just to refresh our memory, um, these six resolutions, including the uh, privileged speech of Senator Manny Pacquiao, are all related to the deaths and abuses of overseas Filipino workers, particularly Joanna de Mafelis. The total deployment ban away and its impact on the economy and our government's migration policies. Marami na pong nangyari mula ng unang hearing natin noong February 21. Ang mga pangyayari nito ang uh, magpapatuloy na hindi nawalan ng saysay ang buhay ng kababayan nating si Joanna de Mafelis at iba pang naabuso at pinaslang doon sa Bansang Kuwait. Bagamat naging mapagkuha na tapusan ang kanyang buhay, naging mitsa naman ito na maraming pagbabago. At inaatahan na magtutuloy-tuloy ang mga developments, lalo na sa sistema ng pagpapadala natin ng OFW sa, sa ibang bansa. Bakit yung naring ho natin na tayo pa pa nga ito ay nakita, nakakita po tayo ng hustisya sa sinapit ni Joanna sa pagkakahuli sa mga employer niyang sinanader ng isang asa sa Lebanon at Mona Hassoun sa Syria noong February 23. Noong February 12, nag-issue ang ating uh, Secretary of Labor, Secretary Bello, ng total ban on the deployment of all OFW sa Kuwait. Sa loob po ng 94 days na may deployment ban sa Kuwait, nalagdaan na rin yung noong May 11 ang matagal na pong nakabinbin na memorandum of understanding para maprotektahan ang ating mga kababayan sa bansang Kuwait. Alin sunod po sa Dollar Administrative Order 254 at AO 254-A. Pwede na ulit mag-Kuwait lahat ng newly hired professionals, skilled and semi-skilled workers, gayon din ang mga household service workers. Ngayon po, may ilang nagtatanong sa atin. Nalit na ang deployment ba? Napirmahan na ang MOU. Kailangan pa bang ituloy ang hearing? Ang sagot ko po ay resounding yes. I was looking at the POEA job orders 
last night. And we found out that at least one month after the total deployment ban, job orders for Kuwait kept coming in. This only shows that despite the deployment ban, Filipino workers remain among those in highest demand in the Gulf countries. And that's why we need to ensure that the government's efforts are consistent and sustainable, and that similar incidents that happened to Joanne and other OFWs will not be repeated, not only in Kuwait, but also in other countries which are far worse in terms of labor abuse, like Saudi and Lebanon. And I hope you'll be able to talk about it later. Dapat po yung bawat isang Pilipinong lalabas ng bansa, lalo na yung pupunta ng Kuwait o Middle East, dapat naman mabigyan po natin ng kumpiyansa na sila ay ligtas, na ang skills nila ay sapat, at kahit paano may familiar sila, kabisado nila yung uh, ilang mga bata na magpuprotekta sa kanila, yung kultura na kanilang pupuntahan, Lalong-lalo na yung binanggit dati ni Secretary Mamao, yung kafala system, alam nila kung yung ba yung nag-i-exist. Palagi yung tayo kasing mumultuhin nitong mga huling pangyayari na nangyari sa Kuwait. Kaya po sa EFA, DOLE, EOEA, at sa lahat na namin ito po, tayo yung lahat ang nasa lugar para nila maitama ang mga pagkakamali dati. So in today's hearing, we want to know changes in our deployment protocols to prevent such horrors our OFWs experience from happening again. We are also interested to know what has been done to curb the modus operandi of recruiters that process documents of household workers without any due diligence, and what can be done to deepen the accountability of foreign recruitment agencies and their local counterparts. Higit po sa lahat po nating malaman ang mga detalye kung paano ipapatupad ito pong Memorandum of Understanding o MOU para hindi naman ho sa papel lang itong maganda. Alam naman po natin sa kasaysayan marami ng MOU na pinirmahan. But unfortunately, kahit anong ganda ng MOU, kung hindi natin may implement, baliwala rin po ito lahat. Halimbawa, paano natin matitiyak na hindi ko kumpiskahin yung pasaporte ng mga pinay workers dahil sa kapala system kung if it still exists na mabibigyan sila ng holiday, mabibigyan sila ng health insurance, makakakain ba sila, makakatulog ba sila ng tama, sapat na tulog. We expect that to our deliberations today and we can identify policy alternatives and craft measures if need be to strengthen protection of all governments and assure our kapabayans that ab abuses are a thing of the past. Alam ko yung pangarap po yan, pero wala namang pangarap na hindi magkakatoo kung talagang pagsusumikapan natin. Kaya nangikilala na po natin ang mga efforts ng government agencies. Ang efforts ng DOLE, DFA, POEA, and other concerned agencies. Kasama na rin po ang mga NGOs at iba pang mga ehensya na talagang nagsusumikap na matanggal yung sinasabi nilang kakamba ng ating OFWs na pangaabuso at disgrasya. Muli po, magandang umaga. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. At this juncture, I'd like to recognize Uh, the presence of uh, another uh, OFW uh, champion dito sa, sa committee natin. Walang iba kundi Senator J.V. Ehers ito. Siguro, bago tayo to start the ball rolling, we'll uh, ask our uh, good secretary, Secretary Bellio, to give us updates and perhaps some other uh, agencies. Uh, considering doon uh, nakaraang hearing, may mga, may mga napag-usapan na po tayo. Some updates na po. Sige pa, sige tayo. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman, Honorable uh, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator, Honorable Senator J.V. Ercito. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, in behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Department of Labor, including my favorite and special envoy, Secretary Mamaro. Uh, I would like to thank this committee for this uh, opportunity to present to the committee the facts that preceded the, the, the deployment, total deployment ban, then eventually the lifting of
of the deployment bank precipitated by the signing of an MOU uh, to provide protection to our overseas workers. As stated by the Honorable Chair, sometime in February, we first, uh, this representation first issued an administrative order suspending the processing and the issuance of OECs. And this was precipitated by series of death by the suffering from suicide and uh, other uh, causes which were unexplained. Ito po yung nangyari na may tatlo tayong mga kababayan na babae na nagbigti at meron tayong dalawang kababayan na babae na namatay sa kwarto nila dahil sa allegedly yung oxygen suffocation. Kung naglagay sila ng ano ng karwan dahil marami gyata sa usok na nasuffocate sila. And there was another incident where a Filipina overseas worker died as a result of an assault by her boyfriend who eventually uh, committed suicide. So you can see this of that you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, gave this representation a uh, serious reason to immediately order the suspension of the processing as well as the issuances of OECs or the Overseas Employment Certificates. Subsequent to that, your honors, we nakaroon yung discovery of the frontal bank of our uh, uh, OFW Joanna, the late Joanna de Mavilis. Uh, this uh, brought the attention in the eye of our president reason for which he immediately gave this representation, the instruction to declare a total deployment ban, which I did, Your Honors. Uh, of course, the ban was received uh, differently, but mostly were in favor of the ban. Uh, uh, with, the, with the total ban, the President very made it very clear that the total deployment ban will not be lifted unless first Joanna Demopoulos will be given justice and second that there will be a memorandum of agreement between the Philippines and Kuwait for the protection of our overseas workers, particularly our household service workers who used to be called domestic workers, now they are called household service workers. With these two conditions, Your Honor, uh, the, the deployment plan continued for now more than two months, and during which period, these representations were delivered with uh, appeals, especially from uh, the skilled workers who were bound to return from uh, education and others who were there for the first time. Uh, maraming umiyak sa opisina, <laughs> uh, misan, tinatap lang naman din tayo po, pero as I said, dalawa ang kondisyon para malip ang top of deployment ban. Well, you know, as eventually, Joanna was given justice. When the Kuwait government, in absentia, convicted the killers, a Lebanese and a Lebanese husband and a Syrian one, uh, and sentenced to death, to death by hanging. So, to our new owners, that was to already a substantial justice given to Joanna. And subsequently, and that was, I think, on May, kailan ba yun, kailan nagtilman? May 11, May 11. Um, we witnessed the signing of the MOU between our uh, Secretary of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano, and the Deputy Prime Minister, concurrently the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, the State of Kuwaiti, Your Honors. So, this uh, brought about the meeting of the two conditions. And 
upon approaching of my dear friend uh, uh, Secretary Mama and for good reasons your honor kasi sabi ni Secretary pumunta tayo dito nagpirmahan tayo ng MOU for the protection of our uh, uh, household service workers bakatapos hindi nyo naman ibangilip ang ban with this uh, uh, reasoning from our uh, Secretary Mamao, I immediately consulted with the President and through and up the President agreed with the recommendation of Secretary Mamao and directed me to immediately lift the tip deployment ban. Reason for which, Your Honors, we lifted the lifted the total deployment ban. So, uh, I'm sure that there will be a delay of uh, application for deployment, but we have to be very careful. In fact, uh, administrator, uh, uh, who is the administrator of uh, the POEA, is still drafting the guidelines to see to it that uh, the OFWs that we will be deploying will be sufficiently protected. And by the way, Your, your Honours, I would like to mention that in the MOU, there is an agreement to create a joint committee. And this will address your concern, Your Honour, na oh, meron tayong magandang F MOU, pero the problem is the implementation. That, Your Honour, is addressed by that provision which creates a commit joint committee to be composed of representatives from the Philippines and representatives from Kuwait who will conduct the York assessment of the situation of our overseas workers, particularly, particularly our household service workers. Just to, ano lang, uh, Secretary Bell, which government agencies uh, from both Kuwait and the Philippines yung, who would lead the joint committee? So on the part of the Philippines, Your Honor, we designated our uh, labor attaché in uh, Kuwait, and that is uh, labor attaché Resti de la Fuente, and I think he will uh, request the assistance of a representative from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Chair, um, good morning, Pa Secretary. Um, Nabanggit ko nga na na-lift na yung ban, pero technically wala pong nakakalipad. Tama po ba? Wala pa po, wala pa po. So more or less, so kailan yun? Kasi para nabanggit niyo, nagda-draft pa ng IRR. So anong, anong um, target date niyo kung kailan pwede nang makalis yung ating mga kababayan? Sabi ni Administrator uh, Olaya, next week po lalabas na po yung guidelines. But this guideline only refers to the household service workers, your honors, dahil yung mga skilled workers natin are not covered by this MOU. Separately covered sila. So, so yung skilled do natin, pwede na umalis buka? Pwede na po, pwede na po. Oh. Nagka-pwede na si Waxi dahil doon sa ba, yung iba na nag-expire yung kanilang visa, yung iba na nag-expire yung kanilang medical certificate, in fact, pang acting may pwede pang extend yung validity of this certificate. Sabi ni Administrator Royalia, hindi pwede. So, what we will do is, we will have our Administrator from OVA to help financially the OFWs para mabayaran yung bakit medical certificate nila. Magkano ba lumalabas yung medical certificate? 3,000 plus daw po. Ah, malaki din po. Malaki po. Yung ang problema dyan yung visa, pero nandito naman ng Department of Foreign Affairs. I think they, the FA can address that, Your Honor. Meron, meron naman yung siguro kayong budget for, for that? Uh, I'm sure we have to look into that. Before, be, before we give the floor to uh, Yusek Abeyaria no, for, for, for updates, just, just going back to the MOU, uh, Secretary, Article 4, yung uh, sa MOU, how, how do they intend to uh, exercise their oversight function? Will they be meeting periodically or establish a system of monitoring existing uh, uh, working conditions of our uh, OFWs there? Anong, ano niyan? Just, just to be clarified. Uh. 
Thank you, Secretary. Now we give the floor to uh, Insec Abelia of uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs. I was uh, closely coordinating with Secretary Cayetano until last night uh, about the, the situation and updates. But uh, just for the record, please uh, um, give your statement, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, your Honours. More than three weeks ago, on April 26 in Singapore, at the sidelines of the ASEAN Summit, the Department of Foreign Affairs through Secretary Alan Peter Caetano conveyed its commitment to work with our counterparts in Kuwait to achieve our shared goal of strengthening our bilateral ties based on what we hope would be a common desire to ensure the well-being of our Kababayans there. We also say that we also say that if we reach an understanding on the direction we both want to go, the, re the relations between the Philippines and Kuwait would become stronger than ever. On the 11th of May 2018 in Kuwait, we brought the relationship between our two countries to a higher level with the formal signing of the agreement between the Philippines and Kuwait on the employment of household service workers. With the signing of the agreement and the approval of the additional guarantees that we asked our Kuwaiti friends to extend, the more than 250,000 Filipinos in Kuwait can now be assured of prompt and effective assistance if needed. I'd like to point out the salient points of the Philippines-Kuwait HSW agreement. One, the Philippine passport is recognized as Philippine property and thus could not be possessed by the Kuwaiti employer. Two, the opening of the OFW's bank account in Kuwait to ensure that uh, there's a proper record in paper trail. Third, the formulation of a standard employment contract. Fourth, provision of food, housing, clothing, and health insurance for the, for the worker. Next, to allow the worker to help and to use cellular phones and other means of communication. And also, to enforce the agreed wage in the contract. Now, outside of this formal agreement, Kuwait likewise expressly agreed to, one, to repatriate all remaining OFWs in embassy shelters. Next, activation of a 24-7 hotline that distressed Filipinos can call for assistance. And also, the creation of a special police unit that would assist the embassy in responding to calls for assistance. The successful outcome of the engagement with Kuwait would not have been possible without the guidance of the President, who made it clear from the beginning of our negotiations that the well-being of Filipinos abroad should always be paramount. The President actually charted the course that the Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Labor and Employment, and also the President took in addressing the concerns of our nationals in Kuwait. We are also grateful for the patience and kind understanding of our counterparts, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Labor, Social Affairs, and the Ministry of Interior of the State of Kuwait. We thank them for their willingness to work with us to achieve our shared goals. We also thank Silve Secretary Sylvester Bello III and his team from the Department of Labor and Employment, the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, and the Philippines Overseas Labor Office in Kuwait, Special Envoy Abdullah Mamawa, and presidential spokesperson Harry Roque for the important role they played in ensuring the success of our collective efforts. We'll also thank colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs, particularly Ambassador Renato Villa and Consul General Nurdin Lumondot for helping set the stage for a successful outcome of these negotiations and the rest of the men and women in the Philippine Embassy in Kuwait and in the Home Office in Manila. Lastly, we thank our more than 10 million Filipinos overseas, especially those in Kuwait, our new heroes, our Bagong Bayani, who are the ones the government has vowed to protect and whose well-being we will continue to promote. The DFA shall continue its determined efforts to answer the calls for help of any of our Kababayans anywhere in the world. In pursuing this duty, we remain guided by the President's policy that the protection of the rights and welfare of Filipinos overseas is paramount.
Thank you, uh, Jose Cabello. Before we give the floor to Secretary Mamao, sir, uh, I remember last uh, hearing you informed us uh, that Kuwait is partially compliant as a host country for our OFWs. Following the execution of MOU, is Kuwait still deemed partially compliant? I, I believe we need to just go by this particular in, uh, agreement now. Okay. okay, but it's not lifted, yung, yung partially compliant, or would they be... Uh, compliant kasi di ba last last hearing I remember yun po yung po yung na discuss yeah, natin I believe this covers new ground sir thank you so compliant na po uh, yes Which means thank you thank you very much perhaps late, later because of lack of time gusto rin natin pagsalitin yung yung private sector no kasi last hearing hindi sila nabigyan <coughs> ng uh, pagkakataon but can I give the floor now to uh, Secretary Mamao sir unless you you want to waive your uh, time right now <laughs> Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, I'm given this opportunity to participate in this uh, committee meeting uh, to see light on uh, what happened in Kuwait. Uh, I was sent by the president uh, sometime in April uh, 28 uh, to Kuwait to do something in mending the diplomatic and uh, labor relations uh, of uh, the state uh, of Kuwait and the Philippine government. Uh, in my meetings with uh, the officials of the state of Kuwait responsible for the handling of this uh, problem that happened between the two governments, I was able to discuss with them the relationship of the state of Kuwait and the Philippine government. There is a history of uh, strong uh, relationship between the state of Kuwait and the Philippine government. As a matter of fact, uh, the Philippines uh, was then uh, a part of that uh, group that helped the state of Kuwait uh, during the 1990 and 1991 uh, war in uh, the state of Kuwait. The most important thing on this uh, development is the restoration of the diplomatic relations and the liberal relations of the two countries. Uh, during those meetings with uh, the leaders of the state of Kuwait, I had found out the sincerity of the leaders in uh, doing something to strengthen the diplomatic and the liberal relations of the two countries. As pointed out by uh, Secretary Billio, insofar as the memorandum of agreement I is concerned, the memorandum of agreement was signed in May 11. And uh, it was signed by our uh, Honorable Secretary, Secretary Alan Caetano, and the Deputy Minister, Prime Minister, and uh, Foreign Minister of the State of Kuwait. Uh, we were witnesses of that uh, uh, signing of the agreement, Secretary Bilyo, uh, Secretary Roque, and uh, myself uh, during the signing. This uh, memorandum of agreement is one thing that uh, had brought about the lifting of the ban for the recruitment of skilled, uh, skilled workers, semi-skilled workers, and uh, domestic workers. The memorandum of agreement that was signed, I do believe, strengthened the protection of our workers. There are provisions in this agreement which provides that uh, the applicable laws of the state of Kuwait shall also be part of this agreement. And uh, the standard contract that is going to be signed especially by our domestic workers. In reality, the problem is actually more on the domestic workers. We don't have so much problem on the skilled and the similar skilled workers. So this memorandum of agreement serves its purpose in protecting the interest and the welfare of the domestic uh, workers that we are sending to the state of Kuwait.
one thing that uh, I would like to emphasize also is that uh, the joint committee will be convened after the Ramadan. And this joint committee will finalize the implementing uh, procedures uh, for uh, the enforcement of this uh, particular memorandum of agreement. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we already have uh, special teams in uh, the Philippine Embassy, and uh, we decided on this agreement. I don't believe that uh, the special teams that uh, are existing in the embassy and uh, the Apollo office, uh, Apollo office in uh, our embassy will uh, definitely strengthen their relationship with the special teams that will be organized by the state of Kuwait. This will uh, definitely uh, calibrate the operational arrangements of our government in the implementation of uh, uh, the uh, assistance that we are extending to our nationals in the state of Kuwait. I was met uh, by the president also as a special envoy and uh, my appointment is up to October uh, 2012, so I will be involved in the monitoring of the implementation of this uh, agreement uh, during the time that I will be performing my function as uh, a special envoy of the President from May up to October 2012, uh, 2018. Uh, in, this, uh, in this memorandum agreement, we have, uh, we have uh, I mean, uh, uh, provided all the provisions that will definitely protect the interests of our domestic helpers. Mr. Chair, siguro gusto ko lang... Okay, uh, Senator Binay. Gusto ko lang mayroon. May penalty clause ho ba itong MOU? For example, kunwari hindi sila mag-provide ng food. May kasamang penalty ho ba ito dun sa magiging um, employer ng ating OFW? I think, uh, in my view, all these things will be handled by the joint committee after Ramadan. Uh, there will be a meeting that will be convened and uh, all these procedures will uh, be in place and uh, will be undertaken by this uh, joint committee. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's just, I uh, know, because the last hearing we were able to give chance to government agencies. Uh, can, we, can we hear uh, short uh, statements from uh, from private sector, let's let's start with uh, Ms. Uh, Lita Hizon. Ma'am, you recognize? Ms. Lita Hizon is uh, one of the uh, uh, members of the governing board of POEA, if I'm not mistaken, representing the private sector, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, you recognized. Thank you, po, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I just would like to emphasize to the body that the the private sector, the licensed recruitment agencies are doing our part in monitoring its deployed workers. Kasi po, uh, sa nakikita po namin sa news, uh, masakit yung mga paratang na ibinabato na yung private sector nagpalis lang ng tao at hindi na parang pinapabaya na po na, ma namin. On the contrary, baka po hindi mga licensed recruitment agencies yan. Meron po tayong distinction between the licensed recruitment agencies at doon sa mga nagpapalis po ng illegal. Kasi po, uh, we invest so much in our license. Kami po ay covered ng napakahigpit na POA rules. At so, you say may mga illegal pa rin na nakakalabas? Marami po. Marami pa rin? Marami okay. po yan. Uh, Mr. Chair, meron po kaya kayong data kung ano, ilang percentage, anong percentage yung license? At anong percentage yung nakakaalis yung mga kababayan natin through unlicensed uh, recruitment agency? Ma mahirap po yung i-determine kasi nagtatago nga po yung mga ano eh. Hindi ah, siguro ba dun sa mga nagpupunta dun sa polio center, hindi ba ba? For example, yung mga ako, OHA or POA, di ba meron naman yung dati? Katulad ngayon, di ba? Umuwi yung mga kababayan natin na illegal na nakapasok sa Kuwait, kinakulit niyo ho ba yun? At kinakausap na parang, o oh, sige, paano ka nakarating sa Kuwait na, na illegal? May ganun, ano ho ba tayong study or um, collation of data na nagaganap? Lalang-lalang na ngayon na may amnesty program yung Kuwait. Meron ho ba? Uh, sa palagay ko po, meron naman po ang ating government. Palagay ko po. But, uh, 
we'll try to help them po sa pagtutulungan po ng uh, ng government and the private sector uh, hindi po yan ano imposible ma ma maaring hindi po masyadong accurate pero close to accuracy magawa po natin yan actually secretary baka ho nga maganda since yung marami tayong kababayan na bumabalik ngayon from Kuwait dahil dun sa amnesty program sana ho merong kayong parang case profile dun sa lahat ng bumabalik na parang Ah, uh, ito dumaan to sa Dubai or dumaan to sa Bangkok. Tapos uh, ano na to, may bad experience na to sa Saudi pero nakapasok sa Kuwait. Sana meron ho tayong ganung uh, source of um, information. Ang challenge kasi uh, Senator Nancy and I think if 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 I may some some of our clients would go there as a tourist mm. and then would stay there. So it's very hard to to monitor. I don't know if there's such a mechanism that we can uh, come up with or what the department is doing. Uh -huh. uh, Honors, actually, tama po yung sinabi ni Senator Nancy Binay na yung mga bumabalik, malaman na namin na undocumented sila. That's the only time when we learn na undocumented sila. Opo. That is why what we have actually in our polo offices is the record of the documented Pero meron din document, uh, undocumented, pero malakas na lang namin yan para pa nagka-problema. Oh. So, maybe that's a very good idea, Your Honors, na dapat siguro, even those coming back, na found to be undocumented, siguro we should have a data for that. Tama po yun. Senator JV, thank you, Mr. Chair. Tanong ko lang po doon sa mga, kayo po yung mga nag na recruitment agencies, no? Um, doon po sa mga Mr. Chair, nagkaroon nung nasa private sector pa ako, kami po yung mga pioneers na nagkaroon din po ang kumpanya. I was also involved in OFW sending um, workers to Taiwan and uh, Korea no mga time na yun. Siguro alam niyo po yun. In the 1990s, nung nasa negosyo pa ako. So, ang tanong ko lang po, kasi at that time, yung aming pong agency, kung ano man ang problema, nung karoon ng problema yung OFW, concerned din kami. Talagang yung agency, talagang tumutulong, hindi lang si, sa POA. Ganun din po ba ang ano, halos lahat po ng uh, legitimate agency. Talagang hindi yung makaalis lang. Wala pa kailan. Talagang kung nakamunit ang POA, no? hindi lang po ang OWA o POA ang ating pong uh, aasahan. Kundi yung, yung mismong mga agencies are also concerned with their OFWs that they deployed. Yeah. If I may, Madam Chair, eh, Mr. Chair, Yes, yes po, uh, Senator uh, J.B. Hersito. Lahat po ng licensed recruitment agencies ay concerned po sa dineploy na worker. Kasi po, uh, nasa amin po yan na pag-iisip that a happy and protected OFW is also a happy and a safe agencies. At very costly po on our part kapag ka po merong napahamak o naparusahan. Opo, kasi hindi po libre yan. $3,000 po ang ginagastos po namin pagpapauwi ng worker considering na pag pinaalis po na sir, libre po lahat, not only without placement fee, pero inaapo na rin po namin yung mga gastos na dapat po ay sila ang magbayad dahil ayaw po namin that they live already burdened with debts at pag nagtatrabaho ay magulo ang utak dahil nga may mga utang. Hindi po kami pabaya po dyan, kaya po uh, from, from, from the day they apply at bago po sila umalis, meron po kaming iba-ibang level na monitoring. First level po, OFW, we, we give them a briefing on what to do and not what not to do, then we gave them our numbers and even the government numbers para po pag nagka problema meron po silang matatawagan. That's on the philosophy or preemption, preemption of problems to give solution before it becomes serious or it becomes bigger problem. On the second level po, yun man po uh, on our level. On our level po, we make calls to FW but not to all of them and not every day. Uh, we may call to FW na naranap naman namin at nare-report na po sa amin na may problema. Then, yung third level po namin, dun po sa FRA at post. Kasi po sa tingin po namin, they are the ones best able 
uh, to do this. Kasi po, yung mga FRAs po namin, when I say FRAs, yung pong foreign recruitment agencies, meron po yung mga frontliners na Pilipina. Na mga meron po yung mga frontliners na Pilipina na ito pong mga frontliners po na to ay twice a year or once a year na binibriefing din po at ine-educate po ng fila at ng class. Ito po yung association po ng agencies to quit. Tinuturoan po namin sila on problem avoidance, problem solution, problem settling of problem disputes. Yan po yung inaano po namin kasi after the system, yung pong mga FRAs po namin, sila po yung directly uh, involved with the clients. So sila po talaga yung tumatawag po dun sa ano, sila po yung tumatawag sa clients. Kaya we, we, we urge or encourage the government to support our goodwill missions. Ang mga agencies po, gumagastos po kami yearly para po mag-conduct ng goodwill mission sa iba't ibang country of uh, destination po ng mga deployed workers. Doon po sa goodwill mission, yan po yung pagkakataon para po natatawag po namin lahat ng FRAs. Ine-educate po namin sila sa mga bagong rules po ng, ng Pilipinas sa pagpapadala at sa pagkuha po ng workers. Then, Uh, sinasabi po namin sa kanila yung mga bagong problems na dumadating at kung ano, at pinaka-importante po kung ano yung update mechanism ninyo dito sa sa pagsolve ng problema. Kasi nga po, uh, gusto po talaga namin ipakita po sa lahat na ang license recruitment agencies ay iba po kami sa mga illegal kasi nalalang po into one. Uh, that's why mag magandang pagkakataon po talaga ito kasi Uh, gusto ko Ma'am, siguro, siguro isa lang siya kung halimbawa lang magkaroon ng problema yung inyong deployed worker na kayong ahensya nyo po ang nag, uh, nag uh, nagpapala. Ano po ang ginagawa ninyo? Tumutulo, ano, ano po ang parte nyo? Bukod sa, of course, yung andyan ay OWA, PUA. Gusto ko lang malaman kung ano po ang ginagawa ng mga legitimate um, recruitment agencies. Immediately, tinatawagan po namin yung aming FRAs. Kasi sila po yung recruitment agencies. Yes, kasi sila po yung... Kasi mga hindi naman po din kayo na kaya Sila po talaga yon. Sila po yung derecho na pumakausap sa employer, bring my worker here in the office. Kasi yun naman po mga employer na yon, may kontrata po yan sa mga opisina doon na kapag ka... Uh, apat iman na dadala po sa opisina at doon po sa opisina pinag-uusapan ito pong problema kasi po kami uh, medyo ano, pagka po may problema ng ganyan lagi kami on the side of the worker agad yan po yung instinct namin eh tsaka na tayo mag-diskusyon kung sino ba talaga kasalanan kasi kung ang aming pong philosophy kung hindi namin kampihan yan kami na nga nag-deploy, sino ang kakampi yun po yun eh, tsaka na tayo mag-question talaga kung sino, ano. yun po muna kaya medyo strong kami sa FRA. So, this problem, blah, 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 so and so. Ma'am, yun po sa, doon sa mga napinadalang, kasi problema naman ho that, sa, ano, wala pa problema sa skilled workers, no? Ang problema doon sa mga household service workers. So, doon po naman sa mga pinadalang ng mga legitimate um, recruitment agencies, gano'n pa lang yung persento na nagkakaproblema kayo ng may, may, may reports ng abuse, maltreatment, meron din ho ba? Gano'n kalaki? O karamihan ng nagiging biktima, yung po mga illegal na pumunta ro, na as tourists, no, maraming alam ko, yan ang sakit sa ulo nila, Secretary Bello, at ng DFA, yung mga pumupunta as tourists. So, meron din ho ba? Eh, sigurado meron din naman sa dami. At kung ilang porsyento at kung ano po ang uh, ginagawa niya as is. Because I have a bit Mr. Chen, remember, I, ma I, uh, I have two bills pending right now, the OFW Legal Assistance Fund and Distressed OFW Assistance Fund that with, with, uh, with the current issue that all the more I am inclined to put more uh, uh, on these uh, two measures. Sige, ma'am. Mr. Bakasi, Mr. Nangwanan, ma para makasalita ma 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 din po kayo. Ma ma And in addition to that, uh, Senator JV, I'd like to, to put on record na on Monday, I will be sponsoring yung uh, on the floor yung uh, social welfare attache bill. At uh, hopefully, maipasa natin ito sa lalong madaling panahon. To address your concerns kanina, Secretary Bello, no, dun sa mga distress OFWs natin. Sige po, uh, Mr. Alma, please. Uh, 
But Mr. Oh. Uh, uh, Mr. Alma po, meron po sana din ako ipapasok. Baka po ito makatulog. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Can you submit it na, na lang po yes, sa community? Yes po, meron po. Ah, po. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Izon. Salamat. Ms. Wanang? Uh, ang ano po, kung sa recruitment and deployment, yun po yung dati sa ginagawa po namin. Ngayon po, may kasama na hong monitoring. That is why it, this should be uh, included that we do not only recruit, we do not only deploy, but we must also monitor our deployed workers. So in this case po, ang POEA ngayon, nire-require na po kami mag-submit ng deployment report and assessment po kung ano yung status report of our deploys. So with these reports that we are doing, uh, in the later, ano, mag-determine na natin yung mga uh, exact na statistics po nung mga uh, welfare cases and uh, yung mga nagkakaproblema po na ating mga OFWs. Actually, in the past po, uh, this is one thing that we should also uh, reform on how we can build a database that can monitor our workers po lahat, hindi lang po sa Kuwait kundi lahat po ng mga bansa. Especially the but domestic for, workers. In your experience, yung question ni Senator JV, sa isang daan, for instance, na dineploy nyo, ilan yung nagkakaproblema? Uh, hindi po may wasan ang may problema. However, ilan yung nasosolve? Yun po yung ano. But we were just wondering, hindi naman, hindi nyo naman control yun eh, yung problema. Hindi uh, naman 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 naman. Sa isang daan, ilan kaya yung nagkakaroon ng problema? Nakaabuso. Mr. Chairman, uh, hindi may naman 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 naman. workers, no, which mm -hmm. all of us perhaps mm -hmm. would agree, they're the most vulnerable, diba? Now, if, if you look at the uh, NPOU, Article 3, Subsection 5, uh, it states that the Philippines shall ensure that prospective domestic workers are trained and certified on the conduct of housework. In TESDA, uh, we have trainings for household workers. Medyo alam ko po ito, no, masyado, no, itong NC2 certification. Currently, una, Yung question, how many household service workers who ba have been deployed? Uh, sa Kuwait, saka sa, sa uh, outside, outside Kuwait? Sa Kuwait, Your Honor, we have a record of 262. Yung total, out of 260 persons, uh, are okay. uh, the household service workers, about 170,000. My Your question Honor. is this, are they all holders of National Certificate 2 ng, ng, ng TESDA? Because... Because it's supposed to be a current, I, I have not heard any uh, any new policy or memorandum na tinatanggal na po ito, eh, di ba? Administrator Olalia. Uh, Administrator Olalia. Good morning po, Your Honors. Yes, sir, you're right. They should, they should uh, uh, you know, hold a uh, national certification certifi issued by TESDA. So, how are you, sir, monitoring? So, that means to say, all 262, you are very sure na... Now they are holders of 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 yes, the NC. Yes, that's one of the requirement. Okay. Without that NC requirement, uh, hindi po sila papayagan na ma-issue ng OEC ng POEA. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Siguro kasi nabanggit yung 262,000 who yung registered. Ah, uh, based on your estimate, ilan naman who yung illegal? Dun sa record na yung bro, the 262,000 ito yung mga documented. We have additional 10,600. Ito yung mga undocumented. So, bakit na po pa yan yung wrong? Kanina, so, para lumalabas yung, yung sa household uh, service workers, yun yung most vulnerable. Outside, outside Kuwait, uh, Secretary Bellion, can you, can you give us some figures? Ilan yung mga... Lahat yung sila, uh, Attorney Olalia, they are required no, to, to be uh, NC2 holders. Yes, please, uh, Attorney Olalia. Your Honours, for we have the biggest ports of Saudi Arabia. For 2016, we have 107, 298 new hires for Saudi Arabia, and then uh, it decreased to 103,452 this last year for 2017. Ang second po na biggest destination ng ating domestic workers is Kuwait. Last uh, 2016, we have 57,726 DWs. 
Yes, po. But yung actual na nandun na... Uh, ano, these are the new deployed... New deployed. Yeah, eh, pero wala kayo dito yung uh, existing... Din, yes, we do, we do have... So, sasabi mo, ilan mo yung existing? Uh, Kasi lalabas yung existing plus new deployment. Yes, we can provide you with that data. Yeah, can you give us a, a copy? Yeah. Oh, kanina lang, no, I, I was... Uh, it caught my attention yung sinasabi niya, uh, Miss Season, yung how much they need to pay, etc. Uh, siguro yung DFA, no... Kasi we were informed that the average estimated profit for an individual household worker in Kuwait is up around 3,000 US dollars. I'm not sure of the, the figures. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And that will be split between the recruiters of both in Kuwait and in the Philippines. Now, do you have any figures as to the amount of money that employer pays in order to employ a domestic helper? This is inclusive of fees and other miscellaneous payments. Kasi kung titignan natin, and we have been receiving a lot of information about this, it costs between 4,000 to 5,000 US dollars. And I don't know how much is the actual cost ngayon. Kung ganun yung cost, tapos biglang aalis yung employ employee mo sa yung lugar. I mean, this is also part of the problem. That, that's what I'm saying. Kasi yung employee, employer, Manghihinahayang siya, nag-invest siya. So, this is what we want. If we want to discuss this objectively, we have to look at this uh, angle. Eh. Sige, sige, uh, under Secretary uh, Bella, please. Uh, first, I'd just like to make a reference to the uh, abatic monitoring. Yeah. Yung, ano, uh, just, a, uh, just, a, just a comment. Yung po mga uh, FRA for only required to guarantee the welfare of the OFWs for three months. Tama ba yan? Three months. Three, three months. Six to six or three to six, but uh, the length of the employment the, uh, is two years, so the balance is uh, unmonitored in a sense. And, uh, no, but in other words, what we guarantee, we uh, if you want to improve, if you want to improve, it would be better, it may be better to ensure the, the to monitor the whole for the entire. Oh. Yung high cost of recruitment or getting a household worker is, is, is actually part of the problem in itself. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I say something? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, there are, uh, there are more than 250,000 uh, uh, overseas Philippine workers in the state of Kuwait. And I think out of that 250,000, there are more than 160,000 domestic workers. That, is, that, uh, that shows the big number of domestic workers. And uh, as you mentioned about uh, the problem on this uh, uh, pay that is being, uh, being paid by, I mean, uh, spent by the employers from 3,000 to 5,000, that really causes a problem sometimes. Because if the recruiter cannot give the entire uh, payment of 3,000 or 5,000 from this employer, the recruiter will transfer this uh, domestic worker to another employer. And that's the problem because with this, uh, under this situation, we cannot monitor the whereabouts of this, uh, of this worker. Because you know what the problem is? Based on your experience, how much the last few years of the May na they don't have to be abused? The other ones, right? Pag may nag-aawa na better pay or uh, minsan to umaalas para maghanap ng ibang uh, amo. So, bakit yung sa experience niya, gano'n ka talagang po yung ganitong... Uh, may, uh, Mad Madam Senator, may I answer that? Uh, kung sa bilang po, uh, hindi po namin ma-determine because uh, we never monitor the number. However, ito pong runaway, ito po talaga ang problema ng Kuwait. Uh, kaya ho nabansaga ng Kuwait na runaway country. So, with this, and in relation to the payment, siguro ang dapat natin tutukan is how to equip the housemaid, our domestic worker, with the skills that is needed. That is why we support the, the proposal of uh, having them a mandatory training. Kaya po nabansaga ng minsan ang isang housemaid, it is because pagdating niya ho doon, hindi niya alam yung mga trabaho. So, napapagalitan siya or nasasaktan, ganyan. So, uh, we need to train them more. Ito po kasi yung uh, required na 
magkakaroon na po ngayon ng, ng intensified training uh, skills para sa domestic worker. Ito po yung makakabawa sa mga problema po ng workers pagdating po doon and especially the runaways if they understand what they are going to do there in Kuwait or in, the, in their country destination. I just give the floor to uh, Mr. Alcantara. He is, yes, uh, thank you Mr. Chair. Sir, can you lang po disappoint niyo on uh, the relationship between the cost of employment and the vulnerability of the work of abuse? Now, sir, kung po namin yan, ano, uh, in fact, kaya po yung isang ginagawa namin sa uh, presente yung partner po po, yung mga partner natin sa, sa private sector and also uh, with other NGOs, pinapantayan natin kung yung pang mga charges sa work or sa employer, okay pa talaga. Like, for example, sa Kuwait, last year po, sinukuran nila na itaas yung uh, bayad sa natin ng domestic worker. Kung 3,500, kasi yung nakitaas ko 8,500. Tapos, minumunupulyo pa po yan. Uh, in that particular case, well, yung clinics lang po, yung pwede kang pupunta. So, imagine ninyo, in one, in one particular aspect of deployment, tataas ng almost 200% yung, yung cost ng employers. So, kaya case in point sa point, yung visa fees lang. There was a point na mura-mura lang yung visa stopping fee lang. Pero ngayon, tinaas na po ng from uh, from our uh, government agencies uh, are you aware of this uh, just to be fair no uh, eight clinics lang daw yung walo lang yung nakakopo dati pero ano lang po to be clear po apatikil na po natin yun uh, uh, para to properly hear the point no? yung sa po eh apatikil po natin yun uh, um umakpo na mapilis yung PH PUE DFA sa so, 12 countries po hindi na yan din po nila na mapilis natin yun sabihan muna kayo ng host country na ito yung mga bagong uh, imposition namin. Wala mo bang ganong it's a two-way uh, ano naman eh. Bwede, communication. Pwede humindin. Please, uh, you say, uh, Abelia. Uh, uh, I suppose these things can be clarified, especially uh, with the new understanding there's going to be a bila, uh, uh, there's going to be a consultative group and that can be brought up there easily. Uh, you want to say something in, the, in response to yes, just to be fair? Yeah. While we do regulate po sa POA yung charging of uh, recruitment fees, bawal po kasi sa PRA yan. Eh. But uh, pagdating po sa fees ng FRA, yung sinisingil po nila, we can tackle that doon sa joint committee. I-raise po namin yan na kung pwedeng i-cut short yung kanilang binabayaran doon sa 
pag-engage ng isang uh, domestic worker. Tama po kayo, kapag po malaki yung cost ng binayaran ng FRA, ng employer, doon sa pag-engage ng uh, domestic worker, hindi niya ho basta-basta bibitawan yun. No? Ang isa hong posibleng solusyon na imumungkahin namin, na isasama ho namin sa guidelines, is yung mag-put up ng performance bond yung employer. Para ho pagka hindi ho nasunod at umalis yung, H, yung domestic worker, meron pong insurance company na magbabalik doon sa high cost na binayaran ng ating uh, employer. Yun po ang isang solusyon doon. Okay, so, thank you po sa solusyon ng training centers na binanggit kanina, isasama rin po natin sa guidelines yung pagpapatatag ng uh, training centers para po sa mga PRA. At hindi lang po yung, I mean, mga domestic workers natin, hindi lang po yung domestic workers ang itetrain po natin. I-require din po natin na matrain yung foreign employers kasi kinakailangan ding malaman nila kung ano ba yung mga karapatan at responsibilidad ng ating mga domestic workers. Thank you. Uh, before anything else, uh, Ms. Rosana Ordaneta, Uh, are, are we updated, updated with our uh, training programs in DSS? Because Senator Nancy keeps on bugging me about it. Uh, the last uh, review po ng training regulation and DOM works, this was last year, yung 2017. But we are now incorporating also yung language and culture as a basic competency plus yung workers' rights basically because wala ka dun sa sa program, we are incorporating language, culture, and workers' rights in the new training regulation. Okay. Thank Sir you. Chair. Senator JV, you're recognized. Yes, uh, thank you, um, Sir Chair. Tanong ko lang po, siguro, alam ko, medyo mahirap tanong yung Secretary Bello or sa PUA. Uh, ilang, para na magka-idea tayo, ilang gano'ng karami kaya yung um, calls from distress uh, OFWs yung ating natatagap? And which countries ang medyo marami pa rin? Well, aside from usually Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, no? Ano pa ho ba yung masasabi natin may problema pa, may kafali system pa ba? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as I stated earlier, yung mga na-abuse at na-maltreat ng mga OFWs natin, lalong-lalo yung mga household service workers, 1.7% lang po yan. That is the statistics. Total po, 1.7%. Ngayon, para sa uh, sekretary para sa karamihan of course uh, no. household uh, okay. service workers no apo apo kaya lang nagkakaroon ng perception na malaki dahil kung minsan yung mga because social of the use of the social media okay. eh, kung minsan nagkakaroon ng ano impression na napakarami na ano eh na ano kung minsan nga one time merong OFW pumunta sa akin sabi niya sir Naka-report ako na nasa Kuwait ako. <laughs> Ang report kasi ng, from Riyadh, she went to Kuwait. Eh, sabi niya, sir, naka-report ako. Nandito na ako sa Pilipinas, sir. From, from Riyadh, I went to, back to the Philippines. Pero yung social media na nagsabi na pumunta sa Kuwait, eh, talagang fake news yun. Pero that is happening. And in fairness dito sa mga uh, agencies natin, your honors, talaga naman, They are also conscious of their responsibility. At talagang inaalagaan din nila. Kaya lang nga, marami rin ganun na ano, hindi natin maiwasan. Pero doon sa mga namamaltrato, very prominent dyan ang Kuwait at saka uh, Saudi Arabia. At saka kung minsan, daw malayo-layo sa Alcobar din, sa Alcobar. Malayo-layo na lugar, uh, you need to travel about 600 to 800 miles. Ayun po. Uh, Pero doon sa mga iba naman, mga UAE, sa United Arab Emirates, wala ang halos, no? By sa UAE, UAE, UAE wala na. Po, hindi po masyado. Sa Bahrain, Bahrain. Eh, wala niyo masyado. Uh, Qatar, wala niyo masyado. Maganda, ma medyo maliling. Maganda ka nila, protection. Kaya yung ating mga OFW, yung mga household workers natin sa Qatar, minsan nga nagpunta ko doon, nag-grocery ako, yung, yung grocery cart ko, mga wanted lang nung grocery cart nung household workers ka. Mas malaki yung kanyang cart kaysa akin yun. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, mari, maano sila. Masaya po sila. Ka sila ka ka sila. Ka ka can, can we uh, get a uh, reaction Kasi, from... Bago lang sa get. Gusto ko lang mo malam. Kasi si, binabagit niya ng 1.7%. What is... Anong exact figure ng 1.7%? 
That is less than 10,000, Your Honor. Okay. Is less than 10,000. 10, 10,000 out of? Out of 170,000 lang po. Na household. Uh, let's, let's just uh, hear from uh, Ms. Marcia Gonzalez Sadikon, National President of ACO FW. Ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, po. Thank you for giving us this avenue. I just want to go back to that issue, yung tungkol doon sa increasing incident of ma of abuse. Siguro po kasi, like one, yung nabanggit ni Senator na sa mahal nga nung, nung price no, na China charge ng, ng foreign counterparts. Second, siguro, uh, we have been, it's a, sad, it's a sad fact that every day parang it became a natural item in the news sa Facebook posting na, na ma-maltreat yung ating uh, uh, OFW. Uh, kami sa OFW, we, we tried to go back and review dun sa mga old uh, incidents. Parang lang kasi, with all due respect to our DFA representative here, parang hindi masyadong napapalo o napapanish yung mga culprits of maltreatment. Ang daming ano na nasesettle na lang. Kaya tuloy ang tingin sa workers ay mukhang pera. Nagulpe, nasaktan ng grabe, tapos pa uuwiin kasi amicably settled. Bakit hindi natin pwedeng total ma-ebidensya doon? Klarong-klaro, gulpe sarado yung worker. but hindi i-push hanggang sa ma-convict yung uh, employer? Siguro we also have to review on that. Yung, yung the way they handled for the DFA, the way they handle the cases, kahit na sabihin mong, kasi marami, marami if, if the committee would allow um, or a request, a case audit has to be requested, siguro. Periodically. I, I, I don't know kung merong ganon, ano, we are not aware of it. I'm sure we have that in the yeah. government sector. Sana po maibigay din sa, sa, sa public. And one more thing, po, we are talking about how to monitor the whereabouts of our OFWs. A OFW came up with a mobile uh, application, a monitoring application, and soon to be officially be launched. Ito po ay at matap to the government. At every Friday, we'll send out a Kamustaka message, and then the OFW will just respond, mabuti or di mabuti. From there, po, mamamonitor natin actual time kung ano ang kalagayan ng isang worker and those responses will be sent out directly to the sending organization or the sending deployment uh, deploying agencies po so yun lang ang aking request sa sa ano na to yung sana yung uh, the way our ATN handles the cases kung talagang may meron tayong basehan na i-convict to get away from settling amicably, may perang ano, no. Tapos yung mga SPA, siguro dapat na natin i-stop yan dahil pag binigyan, nagbigay ng SPA, parang yung, yung complainant, wala na, na-waive niya na yung kanyang rights to, to, to uh, defend herself. At saka, ayaw ko nang nangyayari sa mga SPAs na naiwan. Maybe we can request, uh, the committee can request for the the status, kung ano nangyayari doon sa mga cases na iniwana ng SPA. Yun po, sana ang hiling ng uh, aming sector. Thank you. Uh, before before we recognize uh, Yusek Abela, I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Jun Aguilar, the chairman of Filipino Migrant Workers Group. We'll give you the floor after we, uh, Yusek Abela res re responds. Or you, you want the... I just want to make a response to okay, uh, please, what the ladies said. Uh, well, basically, you regarding the distressed workers, bro, no? uh, from experience, the distressed workers would rather go home than file a case. So, uh, That's the unfortunate uh, yeah. truth. Actually, yeah. I think for them to pursue the case, they have to stay. And uh, and ng taon yun. So I think yung mga OFW natin would rather just go and go home and be with their family than stay in a center na nag-iisa sila to. Unfortunately. Hindi mo pa pwede kasama yan din dun sa MOU na pag may kaso, kahit umuwi na sa Pilipinas yung kamabayan natin, tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung case. Something that we could take up with the Joint Committee on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we give the floor to Mr. June Aguilar, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Believe, uh, believe me, uh, hindi ba ang sisimula mo? <laughs> believe me, hindi ba ang sisimula mo? I'll, I'll give the floor to, to, to some of our guests. Uh, 
afterwards. But uh, please try to limit your, 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 your statements because you can actually submit your, your statements and we will consider it in our committee report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Aguilar. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, una po sa lahat ay uh, ang uh, grupo po namin ay nagpapasalamat sa bumubuo ng ating team na pumunta sa Hawaii para maisakatuparan ang uh, MOU or yung MOA. Uh, alam po namin na isang uh, malaking hapang ito para sa ikaw nga, ikaw puputi ng ating mga kasamahan doon sa iba yung bagat. Pakalawa po, uh, ito ko lang ang pakita. Uh, alam po, Mr. Chair, uh, ako po ay eh, hindi ko na matandaan kung ilang basis ko po inirate itong issue na to. But just the same, I would like to rate the same issue again because this has been an issue 23 years ago and uh, we always go back to this issue and narinig ko na naman po ngayon uh, bago po ako magsalita. Yung tungkol po sa monitoring, tungkol po dyan sa data because the fair government information system on migration which, which was embodied in the law has not been, uh, you know, achieved so far. Uh, I think tungkol uh, po sa migrant work is it in existence? Uh, is that the question? Is it in existence? What happened? Hindi po nagawa. Does not exist. Does not exist. We don't even ask if it's effective. Exactly. So, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang ang pumulitin. 1995 po, nandoon po yung sa mata. And doon po sa section 20 on the amended law, yung RA 122, nandoon po yung naman po yun. It was adapted na po. And yet, wala pong uh, naging resulta up to now, kaya po siguro pa bakit bakit tayo na yung data bakit gusto natin. At tapos po, yun po yung mga dapat ilapan at kung sino yung dapat lapatan, hindi po natin matrace, hindi po natin mamonitor simply because there's nothing like this. Kung babatahin po natin yung full text noong section 20, natin lahat po yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Nandun po, at yun sa mga employers, who will be responsible? Nothing to undin po. But we never go back to that. As I said, we never run out of good law. In fairness to the legislators, like the Senate and in the House. But just the same, if we don't implement certain laws, then we go back to this problem. So, ang ating po ay sana mabigyan na pansin po ito sapagkat ako po ay isang ininyero na dating OFW sa Riyad. Kapag ka po walang data, ang linear po hindi makalang magdisenyo. And the same thing with our, uh, uh, with our uh, officials in government. I think it would be a lot difficult if they don't have the real data. So yun po yung hinihingi ng shared government information system on migration wherein five big departments of the government are updated to do so. Pati po yung walang mga sub-agencies na tutuon po lahat sa batas including the fourth of fund, natutun din po sa batas. So, parang po pwedeng bisitahin ulit, tingnan ulit. This is, I think, 23rd year already. And nothing has been done so far. Yun lang po, maraming pala. Thank you very much. Can, can we hear uh, from the government side? Why, you, I mean, to react to this? This is still non-existent. Last night, we just passed and, 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 uh, had the bicameral conference on the national ID system. We will ratify it later this afternoon. Naunahan pa nitong database na ito. And I think it's, it's no-brainer how, how, how important this would be. You want to comment, ma'am? You say, Nike, you're yes, recognized. I would just like to make a comment. Maybe in future hearings, we can ask also for the attendance of PSA because I think PSA has been mandated to do that. Previously, CFO was had the data, but then uh, since the passage of the creation of the PSA, everything has been transferred to the PSA. So unfortunately, we would continue to wait. Uh, perhaps we'll, we'll call another hearing for specifically for that, uh, Comsec, just to uh, take note. Can, can we hear now from Ms. Uh, Elsa Villa? Ma'am, you have the floor. But before you speak, I would invite uh, our resource persons and guests to, to uh, have your lunch. This is a working uh, lunch. Thank you. Ma'am, Ma'am Villa, you're recognized.
Thank you po. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. And thank you for inviting Pase to this gathering. Um, we were speak, uh, Senator Bin, I mentioned earlier about uh, the government collating the number of uh, you know workers who are who have been abused or who were undocumented and had problems. Uh, but I then this uh, the request was pag uwi nila pwede ba natin ma, ma ano, sa airport or when they go to PR uh, to Owa I s would just suggest further doon na sa centers habang nasa centers sila oo uh -uh, because they are there they are staying for how many weeks or months they could already give us the profile of all those in the centers and they would tell you sino nag recruit sa kanila ano ba, illegal recruiter ba o legitimate ang pag-alis niya. Kasi yung iba naman doon, although uh, legitimate silang umalis dito, eventually nagiging undocumented sila because they run away or because they do, uh, they do not want to come home, they want to overst overstay. So, from there pa lang ho, magkukuha na natin yung datos. And then, dagdagan na lang yan dito kung ano yung nakuha na ng OWA o yung mga umuwi. So, for me, uh, if we start there, we'll get somewhere. And then, the other thing that I would like to add is yung na-mention kanina ni Mr. Jerome uh, ng Opli Foundation about uh, yung the cost ng, yung pagtaas ng cost ng hiring of ano, could lead, and it's really uh, one of the big factors why we have a lot of abuses. Because parang ang iniisip ng employer, I invested so much, I, kailangan mabawi ko yan. Oh, yun ang nagiging ano yan, pinapahiram yung maid sa kung sino-sino. They have to work even after they have worked in that one house. But what I'm really pointing at also is that, uh, may mention na rin ni Mr. Alcantara na itong like the gamka, yung decking before ng DOH, which we have been able to resolve, no? nawala na yun. But uh, in different guises, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ho ito. In fact, sa ngayon ho, meron tayong problema, yung registration na $10 na nire-request ng, uh, it is supposed to be from the Ministry of Health daw about GCC country. This was brought out by PASE, um, Several months ago, six months ago, we wrote a letter to the DFA, to POAA, to uh, DONI, and there was a meeting that was, uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, a uh, meeting was held and uh, which eventually led to the, the uh, and by, you know, the issuance of a department order by uh, the then Secretary of uh, no, Department of Health. Unfortunately, itong department order na ito hindi sinusunod ng countries, uh, yeah, host countries. Now, well, there is, ano, uh, mayroon naman po, yung ibang host countries, nag, ano, nag, uh, uh, they, like, for example, Saudi Arabia, UAA. Pero, ngayon sa ngayon, ang problema po namin ay yung Oman at saka Bahrain. They do not want to follow this. So, dilemma ng mga agencies, hindi nila alam kung ano ba ba mag expire na po yung mga visa, yung workers cannot leave, and then itong mga workers na ito ang nagsasuffer kasi nag-resign na yan sa mga trabaho nila. Ngayon, ang sinasabi ng DOH, hindi pwede ang clinic mag magpa-medical kung hindi nagbayad, uh, kung magbabayad ng $10, matususpend di kayo. And they have done that already. Now, on the other side naman, hindi tatatakan ng visa kung wala yung $10 na resibo. And what's really you know, uh, disturbing about this, that $10 is to be paid to a certain account. We don't know, nobody knows. It is, they just give you a number, you pay to that online, and it's supposed to be the number. Yes. And it's supposed, huh? This is just in for Bahrain and Oman. But uh, it is supposed to be paid pa by the worker using a credit card. I see uh, my, my workers natin marami ba dyan may credit cards. So ang nangyayari nga nung una, kasi yung naiipit yung agency, ang ginagawa ng agency, sila na nagbabayad. However, because of the department order of DOH, pag nalaman ng DOH na nagbayad ka, suspindedo ka. 
Yeah. So, ngayon yun lang problema namin. We're having another meeting this coming Thursday, so if you would like to be, you know, updated on that. Uh, can can you give us some 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 inputs so we can monitor what's 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 okay. going to happen? Bibigyan po namin kayo ng backgrounder. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you. Please please submit it to the committee. Ma'am Ma Medwina, you want to say something? Uh, just to give you time to to speak. Thank you. Actually, uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, Mr. Chair. Um, ganun din po ang gusto namin i-reiterate and then in addition uh, another factor na I think our uh, agencies that are deploying domestics are already doing it but I think we still have to augment our training program. Yung pong isang major na talagang dapat natin we have to pay attention to because we even discovered, this is really funny, we even discovered no read, no rights from people that have been deployed when they are supposed to get NC2. They are supposed to get... Hindi ka ako para ang University of Recto yung ano? Hindi nga ako namin maintindihan how they were able to get through. This is, this is really something, uh, it's, it's alarming because even during that time when I was in DESDA, mm -hmm. nung sa TM Kalaw Street, Meron kaming na uh, discovery doon na <laughs> nag-i-issue ng uh, ng uh, NC. Ang OEC nga ho natin na uh, fake na rin eh. hindi po ba admin? Meron pong nakakaalis na uh, uh, yun it's a, it's a great concern no attorney Olaya because if you can fake this and, and you have no way to monitor it. Mm -hmm. Baka baka mahirap. Baka doon sa sinasabi yung 262,000 may mga nakalusot din diyan. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we really have to pay attention to. Because uh, we are truly, in fairness to the agencies, they're trying so hard to make them live uh, already capable. But and dami nakakalusot na ganun eh. And uh, pag nasira yun, it boomerangs to us. Lagi kami yung masama. Lagi yung mga agencies ang masama. When we are doing what we have to do, yes. especially now. Thank I you. Mean, you naman. Thank you, Ma'am. Sir, Sir Binay. Oh, sige. Yes. Kasi nabangit ni Ms. Uh, Elsa na yung parang problema sa Barim and Oman. May MOU na ba tayo sa Barim and Oman? Hindi ko na yung Sige tayo tayo, pinag-aaralan nyo ng hubad na yung mga countries na wala pa tayong MOU na isasama nyo dun sa uh, ban? Uh, hindi lang po pinag-aaralan po. <laughs> yung actually we are going to revisit all the existing bilateral agreements po. Kasi medyo outdated na rin yung mga bilateral agreements na yan. So there is now an ongoing review of all the existing bilateral agreement po, Your Honor. Now, ma Your Honor, if I may, mag-comment lang sana ako doon sa comment ni the gentleman from si June. Uh, I appreciate very much the call of Mr. Aguilar. This, in effect, is a wake-up call. Wake-up call to us in the, in the bureaucracy. Kasi napaka-clear napaka yung mandato ng Republic Act 10022 na dapat merong information sharing among these mentioned agencies. Mukhang nakaligtan itong provision na ito. So we appreciate, we do appreciate the call of uh, Mr. Aguilar na dapat talaga i-convene na itong inter-agency uh, committee na ito. Your Thank Honor. you, Secretary Bear, because this is unacceptable. Oh. This is really unacceptable. Uh, I think uh, agencies, namely DOLE, DFA, POEA, already have their respective data. So all we need to do now is to convene and collect the data before turning over the data to PSA. Because I think PSA is saying wala, wala pang nag, nag... Sila, they're just waiting for the data. Uh, anyway. Can I say something? Um, yes, Secretary uh, Mamao. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, insofar as the two countries, uh, that's in Bahrain and uh, Qatar, I think uh, there may even no no need for any memorandum of agreement because uh, these two governments had abolished the Kapala system. Now, in my conference with the leaders of uh, the state of Kuwait, I also pointed out the efforts of their country insofar as the abolition of this uh, system in the state of Kuwait. And uh, the, we, we have the assurance that uh, their government will be looking into it. 
Thank you. Uh, siguro, Ms. Villa, bigyan nyo rin ng copy si uh, Secretary Mamao dun sa, sa hinihiling po rin nyo. No? Now, let, let me just ask uh, DSWD, no? talking about social welfare attaches, kasi according to Philippine News Agency, there are 10,800 undocumented Filipino migrant workers in the state of Kuwait alone. And we understand that social welfare attaches were able to serve sa record na nahingi namin 4,334 documented and undocumented workers in uh, Kuwait. Now, given the number of undocumented migrant workers in Kuwait, how does your department monitor the beneficiaries for these workers if they do not have existing record in our embassy's uh, databases? Parang very challenging ho eh. Magandang tanghali sa ating lahat. Uh, the DSWD has a network of organizations and community-based organizations. So those undocumented uh, workers would have the families, their, their friends, neighbors who would reach out to our field offices for information. So we have this information coming from various sources and that the support uh, from the host agents at uh, host countries level and the support at the level of the communities we have uh, different types of services of or assistance of dswd including traffic uh, victims survivors of trafficking in persons so we have uh, an array of services as we call it in collectively assistance to individuals in crisis situations so we we rely on the, the network of people's organizations, migrant workers' rights organizations, and from there we we, we assess. And uh, social workers have already achieved a certain level of competence, uh, especially those who who have been assigned to handle special cases involving abuses. In particular, the undocumented cases really reflect also the problems or the nature of the problems that we have uh, in, in their own families. So DSW itself is very much concerned on the problem, comprehensive nature of the problem facing the Filipino people who are really unemployed and seeking, assist, I mean, seeking employment abroad through various ways, including those, you know, illegal ways ways or creative ways of going out of the country and become undocumented workers. So we say creative because Filipinos are really creative in managing their problems at their own level. So we have social workers are really exposed to this creativity of the Filipino, Filipino fi people, I mean families affected by this nature of problems that we have. Yes. So we are trying to address this by joining other organizations for policy changes in terms of creating conditions for jobs, I mean, for opportunities for jobs and livelihood in the country, while we are also building our, our comp competencies, our enhancing our skills in responding to the social welfare needs and services, I mean, that services are along social welfare when we deploy social workers in these countries affected by the, the number of uh, obvious, obvious workers that we have, especially at the Middle East. So we yes, sustained our efforts at assigning social workers as attaches. But unfortunately, the SWD is only using the I'm going, order. I'm going to that direction, ma'am. It's indeed commendable. Yes. But if you look at the data, we were given the data August, as of August 2017. There are only four social welfare attaches deployed in Malaysia, Riyadh, Jeddah, and Kuwait. And one, with one who ended her duty last February 28th. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, my question would be, with, 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 with this magnitude, the number of OFWs deployed in these countries, uh, bakit ho apat lang yung social welfare attaches natin deployed? Are there any other plans, I mean, to, to, to deploy additional welfare attaches? Uh, ito ba ay question have, of budget? We have problem? seven attaches, one in Malaysia, one in Riyadh, one in Jeddah, we have one in Kuwait, one in Dubai, and we are now having one in Hong Kong, Qatar, and soon we have to face 
a replacement for Riyadh and Kuwait. So we will have. Uh, but replace the the the, the of biggest course we have uh, what, what is the budget of the international uh, service Social welfare service. Uh, welfare oh, for Filipino nationals for 2018? For instance, this 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 year is it? I mean, it's it's very little because for four posts alone we have to receive 26 million. Siguro ano na lang, ma'am, just to <laughs> to 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 not to, to waste uh, mm. a lot of time talking about it. Can you give us the lang siguro a, a a decent proposal on how we can help in the budget uh, yeah. uh, deliberation this coming year. For additional uh, four posts, we need 26 million. And for rental of vehicles, we need 70, at least 78 million. And then for, for annual <laughs> operating expenses, we need 68 million. I'm, I'm sharing this because despite the fact that I am sponsoring this yes. this measure on Wednesday on the floor for floor deliberation, we don't want to wait for the law yes. to, to come out before we'll be able yes. to, to serve our, our, our people. So baka pwedeng bihan nyo kami ng data yes. for, 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 for the budget deliberation on, on probably in the next few months. Eh. Yes, we have Thank prepared you. our Sige po. figures. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you ma'am. No, let's let's go to you, you want to say something, ma'am. Uh, let's let's just talk more about the uh, the uh, the uh, protocol, naman, protocol on uh, repatriating our uh, OFWs. Perhaps this question would uh, uh, be addressed to DFA and uh, Dole. One of the areas of cooperation between the governments of the Philippines and Kuwait is to ensure that the uh, repatriation of household workers is done in accordance with law. Now, one of the controversies that arose prior to the signing of MOU is the viral rescue of domestic workers from Kuwait uh, homes. The government of Kuwait insisted that this was a violation of the sovereignty and eventually uh, itong uh, unfortunate event, event for, 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 for our uh, ambassador, Ambassador Villa from Kuwait, because of uh, undiplomatic uh, acts. Now, my question is this. What is the protocol in rescuing OFWs in distress? When do you request for the assistance of the host government? Please don't get me wrong. I commended the efforts of DFA and DOLE for rescuing our OFWs. I have seen a lot of pictures na bug-bug sarado yung mga kababayan natin. And talagang no-brainer. Hindi na natin hihintayin na maging ata nasa otaol na yung kababayan natin bago natin i rescue That's why I, I, I commend your efforts in rescuing them. But just again, to objectively discuss itong, itong, itong situation na to, itong process natin, masiguro natin na our protocols are in place, in effective, tama ba na, na lumabas sa video yun, tama ba na i-upload yun, Sino ba responsab responsable doon? Nung in-upload ba yun, sinasabi natin may mga kababayan pa tayong kailangan i-rescue, na na-compromise ba yung mga kababayan natin na dapat din i-rescue? Meron pa bang kailangan tayong i-rescue? And again, please don't get me wrong, I commend the efforts of DFA and DOLE, but I think it's just but proper to talk about this. No? Again, what is the protocol in, in rescuing OFWs in distress? When do we request uh, for the assistance of the host government during uh, these times? Uh, perhaps in DOLE and DFA, if you can. Do DFA, uh, you say, Abelia? Uh, Mr. Please? Chairman, uh, before uh, Abelia, is there a way I can sure. say something about this? Secretary Mama, uh, recognized. Uh, we had uh, been to Riyadh, uh, to Kuwait, uh, Your Honor. And uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, uh, th this is a very sensitive issue. And uh, if we can uh, take this up in, a, in an executive session uh, so that we will not be opening something uh, because the two countries actually had forgotten everything. <laughs> what happened in that uh, embassy episode uh, are the things of the past. So Which somehow is good for us the, because we can move yeah. forward, Mr. Uh, yeah. Secretary, yeah. right? Sige pa. Perhaps yung, if, if there are things that we can discuss uh, in public, pwede natin discuss But if you feel that this is... Uh, quite sensitive and needs uh, an executive session. We'll do that later or, or uh, uh, later on after we discuss some of the issues. 
do you do you want to say something, or you you also wanted to ask for an executive session, you say Cabela? Uh, uh, basically, uh, I, I think the uh, secretary has already conveyed this his intentions uh, regarding okay. this matter. It's okay. Uh, we'll do that later on. Uh, moving forward. Siguro, Mr. Chairman, since nga yung mga resolution, eh, base dun sa nangyari kay Joanna, can we just get an update? Uh, ano na nangyari dun sa supposed to be na recruiter niya? <laughs> Kasi iba ko yung kaso ni Joanna, legal, na naging illegal. Um, Tapos I think na yung rec original recruiter niya uh, napasara, kaya nahirapan na ata kayo mag-trace. So can we just get an update? Uh, Secretary Bello, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, the tama po yung sinabi nyo, Senator uh, Nancy, na yung unang recruiter niya ay nasarhan. Na nasarhan. Pero that was before, uh, after she was already deployed. Uh, ngayon, nagkaroon din ng issue kung sino talaga nag-recruit sa kanya. Pero dahil meron, I, I'm sure you saw that TV uh, episode na meron nagpresenta na siyang kumuha kay Ms. Dima Phyllis doon sa Sara Iloilo at dinala doon sa agency. Ngayon, it appears that that girl who recruited her is not a registered agent of the agency. Kaya, illegal recruitment na yun. Oo. Pero nonetheless, na nangyari nga yun, so she was deployed and then she worked with the employer and after so many, I think, uh, uh, she completed her tour of duty, kung baga sa no, but after that, she asked for an extension. Nagpa-extend po siya. Ayun. Si but yung extension na ngayon is unauthorized na dahil wala na yung dati niyang agency eh. Siguro yung mga, kasi di ba minsan, may mga sinasara ka yung mga recruitment agency. Tapos, nakadeploy na sila ng empleyado abroad. So, ano may monitoring system ba kayo na nasasabihan niyo yung mga nasa abroad na, o yung, yung recruiter niyo, uh, may violation to, kaya saraan doon na. So, kung may problema kayo, sinasabihan niyo ba kung saan sila tatakbo, or... Ano ba yun? Nililipat niya ba to Another agency or responsibilidad na sila ng OWA? Actually, Your Honor, yung responsibility is now with our polo office. Oo, dahil wala na yung agency at uh, dapat monitor yung polo namin. And that is the reason, Your Honor, na -re -recall, I recall practically all the people in polo in Kuwait from the labor attache to the assistant labor attache and the welfare officer, hindi recall ko lahat sila. Dahil talagang hindi inalagaan yung ating kababayan na si Ms. Dima Feles. And this is worsened by the fact na yung relatives ni Ms. Dima Feles already informed yung aming tao doon sa polo na nawawala yung kapatid namin. Eh, ang sagot nung aming ano, Talagang nagalit nga ako nun. <laughs> sabi niya, nakita mo ba yung tambak na papeles dyan? In short, sabi niya, I have no time for that. So, without any hesitation, Your Honor, uh, for the record, I immediately recalled not only the lady who acted that way, but including yung assistant labor attaché and the labor attaché. And they are here now. And they have to be re-educated on the responsibilities as our people in the front line. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Laya, uh, yung question na yun ni Sen. Nancy, no? yung, may, may kinasuo na ba uh, dun sa, sa agency? And, and, and also, just to clarify, yung foreign labor agency that recruited uh, Joanna has been on your watch list even before this happened, itong Fadila Fars Kawed al Codor Recruitment Agency? Yes, sir. Uh, we disqualified that FRA to in participating with the uh, deployment process because of the violation committed by the uh, PRA, sir. In relation to the question of uh, the good senator, may we uh, volunteer the information that uh, we, the POA conducted a, uh, or, or rather organized a task force for the conduct of investigation regarding the death of Joanna Dimafilis. And uh, 
of late, the task force submitted a recommendation in its uh, report. We will be furnishing this committee. Yes, a I will be asking for, for, for a copy of that. Sir, yung isa, uh, how do you update or initiate the 